Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, well, this this has been, as you know, written and directed by Anusha Rizvi, who's the first time director. And uh, she came to me with a script and I just loved it. I, loved it. Uh, I really found the story which is so pertinent for today and, and how we as a society are concentrating all our energies, our wealth, our resources towards our cities and in the process forgetting all about our villages and rural parts of India where the bulk of our population lives and which is, you know, which should actually be equal partners in, in our wealth and our resources. So uh, this is a film that, I mean, I, when I read the script, I found it really funny. I found the characters really vibrant and, you know, Amma is amazing. <laughs> Uh, and I found it very heartbreaking as well, a story which makes you feel you know, quite uh, guilty actually, as you're laughing through it. And I think in the end, you know, when, when the camera pulls back from the village and goes into the city, you realize these big monster structures and bridges being built, and the people who are building our cities are all people from rural India, migrant labor who we don't even look at the second time. And, and how, how Natha ends up as one of the like, migrant laborers. So I'm hoping that next time we go past the bridge being built and we see yeah, but another Natha, we should, we should think that we should wonder what this guy's story is, you know, what made him land up here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm hoping that this film uh, really touches a chord in people. <clears throat> sensitizes all of us as it has me, you know, when I read this script. But I'm happy to take questions from you guys. But today you have made a picture, there is a message of it. Yes. There are parties in India, 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 there are parties in India. But you have made a picture, we have made a message in India, there is a message in India. लोग तो मीर तो मीरों तक जाते हैं पर इसमें तो वो एक किसान कर्जे तले ही दबता जा रहा है ठीक है इतनी अच्छी पिक्चर आपने बनाई है बॉम्बे में बहुत पिक्चर बना रहे आप हमारे से ऐसा वादा करो भी आगे से भी सभी ज़्यादा अच्छी पिक्चर बनाएं एंड आई सो रेड लास्ट मंथ इन इंडिया � and um, I just wanted to know that, do you think after watching this, um, like the people and the government will be inspired to do more about this and help them? Well, I hope so. There have been more than 250 MPs who have seen the film. The Prime Minister himself saw the film. Uh, Mr. Montague Singh has seen the film. He's the head of the Planning Commission. Yeah. And he actually requested us to have a screening for the entire members of the Planning Commission. And they've seen it. Is today the 21st? Okay, so they're watching it today in India. Uh, so I, I hope that it does have an impact. I think, I, I think it will. I mean, uh, you know, a film. Some films have a direct and immediate impact. You know, a film like Tari Zameen uh, really had a strong immediate impact on the education system, on parents, um, on children. Uh, so I, I don't know whether this one will have such a direct immediate impact, but I, I'm sure that it will have an impact, which will we, you know, hopefully we'll see. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to ask you that were you ever going to be a part of this movie, not just produce them, were you ever going to like do a role like the Nasta? I mean, I've heard some rumors that you were going to do the part of Nasta and stuff. Did you ever think of becoming someone in the movie rather than just producing it? Well, it sounds really funny now, but I was actually hoping for Nasta. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so the director Anusha and I were flirting with the idea of me doing Nasta. I would have to, you know, physically transform myself to look like a villager, which. Which I'm not, but I would work. I would. Well, in Lagan I did, but remember, Lagan was a much more larger than life fairy tale kind of a story. This is very, very real. So I would have to physically transform myself a great deal, which I, which I could do. Uh, but, but we thought it would be good for me to test for the part and see if I can pull it off. And then in the meantime, we found Oka, who finally has played Nata. And when we saw his test, we realized that there's no way that I can come even close to what he's done. So, so we, you know, so we cast Omkar and he's he's a fantastic actor. Just a good choice, oh. Ami. Just a follow up. Um, do you regret not uh, taking part with me? No, I don't, because I think Omkar has done something that I could have never brought to the part. I think what he's brought to the part is so unique and so lovely. I don't think I would ever manage that, you know. Uh, so I, I'm I'm really happy that he's in the film. I'm not. 
Foro Foro has said that he he everything I touch turns to gold. Yes. And so, uh, what is the one advice that I can give young people? Well, first of all, I want to tell you that there's no such thing. You know, everything I touch doesn't turn to gold. Uh, I don't see success is not in our hands. But what is in what is in our hands is how we work and what we work on, and I think that is something that is in our hands. And no matter what profession you are in, no matter where you are, I think it, what I have done for myself and what has worked for me is that I followed my heart, and I've done work which which I enjoy. You know, I'm going to tell you a story. You sure you don't want to sit down? It's a long one. No. <laughs> but I want to tell you something. You know, which which really. Uh, was was important to me. You know, when I came into the industry, this was the year was 1988, and the film was Kayamat Se Kayamat, and it was big success. I became an overnight star and all of that. And then I actually took on a number of films which were not very good, as it turned out. Uh, and and it, within some time, I mean, within six months, uh, within a few months of me, you know, having. Entered the industry, I had signed. I got a lot of offers. I got two, three hundred offers. I signed about nine, ten films. And at that time, other actors were doing thirty and forty films. And so I thought, you know, one third of that should be okay. But I was completely wrong. I had no idea what doing nine films at one time was. So uh, I began working on these films, and a lot of times I realized that, you know, I had picked the wrong films because the directors were thinking differently, and I was thinking differently. The sensibility was totally off. And that taught me two, three lessons. One, uh, in in this field, the director is the most important person, and I must select my directors very carefully. So that is the first big lesson I learned. But the more important one I'm coming to, and what I've lived my life by, is that you know when these films began releasing, they were they were bombing. They were not doing well. So my first one came out, it bombed. Second one came out, it bombed. And then I was being called the one film wonder. You know, who's just given this one success? Like right now, you're saying I've got the Madas touch. Well, I was called the one film wonder, and that is true. And the media was not wrong when they were saying that because I just had one success, and the other films were bomb. They were not doing well. And I realized that of these nine or ten films, these are only the two that have come out. The rest are even worse. So I knew that I was in quicksand. Professionally, I was at my lowest. I could see that my career is coming to an end. My following films are not going to do well either. So I was really at my worst professionally, and I was I used to go I used to get, come home every day after shooting, and I used to cry because I was so unhappy with the kind of work that I was doing. I was really unhappy. Uh, I didn't know what to do, and at that time I was like, you know, I was I, I felt like I was in quicksand, and I was like sinking under, and I just needed someone to pull me out, and someone to help me. And then I got an offer from Mr. Manish Bhatt. Who uh, was at the peak of his career? He had made Saranj, Alt, Nam. He had made these three films. And man, he wants to do. <laughs> But Sir had made these three films, Saranj, Alt, Nam, and he was at the peak of his career. So when I got a call from him, I thought, this is you know now I'm saved. I've got this offer from Mr. Sir, and just the fact that I've signed a film with him, just the announcement. Will get me through another two years, because by the time the film is made and releases, it'll be two years, and you know people will be looking out for that film. Doesn't matter if I had five flops before that. I went to meet him. I heard the script, and I didn't like it. Now, when I was going through this phase of being really unhappy with the work I was doing, I had promised myself one thing. I had promised myself that even if it means that I'm out of this industry, even if it means that my career comes to an end. I am never, ever going to sign a film unless I really believe in it, unless I'm really happy with it. And when Bhatsa offered me that film, I, I didn't like the script. I was really in a dilemma. This was very early in my career, you must remember. And I was at the worst. And all night I was thinking, what am I supposed to do? Because if I say yes to him, that's a smart thing to do. You know, I, I get a new lease of life. But I've promised myself that I will never compromise with what I feel, and I don't want to do that either. So that night was a tough night for me. I was thinking, what am I supposed to do? So next evening, I went and met him, and I said, "Prakash, I have the highest regard for you, and I'm really trying to work with you. But I have to be honest, I don't like the script, and I can't do this film. And it was really difficult. You cannot imagine how difficult it was for me to say that. 
that I'm not doing your film. I mean, he was a top director at that time, and I was down and out. And at my worst, it took all my courage and strength to say, I don't want to do this film because I don't, I won't enjoy it. I don't believe in it, I won't enjoy it. So I did not do that film. We went on to work together in Delhi Kemal a little later. But what I'm trying to say to you guys, and in answer to your question, is that if I had compromised at that time, if that one time I had compromised, I think for the rest of my career, for the rest of my life, I would have been compromising. I would have been really unhappy. If you wouldn't have seen films like Lagan, Tariz, and people coming out of me. So I think moment in my life, I was 23 or 24 at that time. And so that's the one thing I can tell youngsters. Believe in yourself and do what makes you happy. Do not compromise with what makes you happy because I think that is so important. You know, that, that's, that's the only thing I can say. It's for my own life. <laughs> सखी सैया तो खूब ही कमाते हैं महंगाई डाइन खाए जाते हैं हर महीना उछले पटरे इधर का भी बढ़िया बोल शकर भाई के का है बोल हर महीना उछले पटरे डीजल का भी बढ़िया बोल शकर भाई के का है बोल उसा बासमती धान मरी जाते हैं महंगाई डाइन खाए जाते हैं Priyanka, uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate you for Three Idiots. I Thank wanted to meet you after that. It was just amazing. Thank you. The way it brought up the flaws in the education system and the way it actually suggested how to resolve them, it was amazing. Right. Uh, people Life was quite good as well, mm -hmm. but I thought it lacked in a few things. Mm -hmm. Tell me. Uh, like uh, uh, the way Three Idiots brought up the flaw mm -hmm. and, tried, and actually told us the resolutions as well. Yeah. The same way People Life did bring up the flaws. But but it didn't, it didn't tell us any, it doesn't actually yeah. shed any light on the resolution. You're absolutely right. I know it's yeah. going to uh, it's gonna inspire the politicians or other people in India to actually mm -hmm. try and think of a resolution, mm -hmm. but nobody is as smart as you in thinking of resolution. So, you know, I think your observation is absolutely correct. I think that Three Idiots is a film that offers solutions. You know, it's a film that talks about the issues and then actually offers solutions. Uh, in that sense, it's also a very judgmental film. Uh, so it takes sides. It tells you that Rancho is right and Chatur is wrong. You know, it tells you that Farhan and Raju are right and that Virus is wrong. So it's a judgmental film. It takes sides and it is open to solutions. Uh, People Life is not a judgmental film. So because it's not taking sides, it, it's it's a little difficult and it, therefore it's not being judgmental. Uh, let me explain to you. For example, who do we blame in society? Who do you want to blame in society? Is it the politician? Is it the media person? Is it the... Let me just let me just say this, ma'am. Ma'am, ma'am, let me just finish what I'm saying. Just be a little patient. So who do we blame? Is it all of us? Are we responsible? Yeah. Now what I'm trying to say is that you know this film is actually uh, also about. The fact that you know this film is about survival on a certain level. What this film is showing us is that all of us end up doing what we feel we need to do in order to survive in our circumstances. This is a film which is unusual on not only the fact that it's social and political, and you don't often get to see satires, but it's also one of the few films coming out of India which actually doesn't have a conclusive end and it leaves it to you to decide what to do next. Now, one of the big reasons that Anusha did not want to offer a cathartic and satisfying end is because if the film was satisfying to you within the four walls of this theater, you would go back home satisfied. The problem is solved. It's not solved. So we want you to go back home thinking that it needs to be solved. So the next time you're driving in Delhi or Bombay or a big city, and you watch these bridges being built by these migrant labor, you should look at these guys as human beings. Uh, coming back to the ending of it, uh, do you not think there was a degree of hopelessness? Because uh, There was, in fact, there was. So, because, you know, the, the idea that, that Anusha had was to actually leave you with a sense that, you know, all is not well. And, and Natha, who has to leave his roots, his emotional roots, 
where his relationships are, where his children are, and, and you know, he lives somewhere else, and he's really unhappy. So it is a film which is which is not a happy end. It's a sad end. It is a pain. Thank you so much for your love and your walk. It was really wonderful being here. Thank you so much.